Good afternoon. What to share? I was thinking about it the past days. I thought maybe something new. What's new? But then, but then, if there's anyone who knows, it should be you. Besides, it's too much pressure. I wanted to be among colleagues, not clients. So I decided to share something old. Old school is cool. Do you agree? In some ways. Old, but current. We have a new program on Media 5, TV 5, called Like a Bossy, like a CEO. So I started with Frederick Tengsu. The next week was uh, Manuel's menu. He said, uh, the key is to stay current for a long time. Moment pick his hotel in Cebu. Current for a long time. Figure that out. That's on media five, tv5.com.ph, like a bossing. So I follow a CEO for an entire, an entire day, and we cut that up into five shows. You watch it from Monday to Saturday, and you can watch it anytime after. So up next is Chuck. Chuck is up next, Chuck Reyes, our coach. You'll have fun with Vicky Bello, trust me, that was a good one. She had fun with me. So I'd like to share something old but current because it involves a news item just in the last 24 hours. Perhaps you've encountered, perhaps you've read this, you've seen this. There you go, see this picture? It's Officer Nick struck with a two-year-old. Sorry for the low res, resolution low, resolution picture, but high impact, I assure you. Especially as we zoom out and see the bigger picture. So you see an officer with a two-year-old, but if you zoom out and see the bigger picture, Daniel Pink, a whole new mind, why right-brainers will rule the future. You gotta move from details to symphony, from fact to story. The bigger picture will show us the story. This two-year-old's dad is in that crash, and he's dead. Officer struck, passed by, and decides to pick up the two-year-old to distract her, to distract her from the situation and sing, twinkle, twinkle. A passerby saw the scene took a shot, and it's gone viral in the last 24 hours. I'd like to share this one slide and three points this afternoon. Three reminders. We need to be reminded occasionally of what we forget, what we take for granted. Number one is the need to address the present. So Nick, the officer, had to stop, had to pull over, step aside, pause, to do what was needed to be done. I must confess, at times I've become too busy. I'm all for, of course, looking at our CRMs and our service level agreements and looking at lead qualification protocols but not if it distracts us from what is most important. Not from addressing the need at the present. A couple of weeks ago, I got a call from a benevolent businessman who decided to fly in John Maxwell to bless the country at this time of challenge. I said, when? He said, three weeks from now. Woo! He was asking for help to organize the event knowing that we brought in Maxwell twice in the past. So that's happening July 6th. I said, let's, let's not talk business. Let's maximize the time till the year for the country, okay? And I'm so excited because on July 6th at 8 to 10 a.m., he addresses 500. 500 of our top military officers and police officers headed by the two leaders themselves, General, Greg Katapang and our PNP OIC Espino. It's the first time in Philippine history that the two heads will come together
to learn leadership together with 250 officers in London. This is in Sofitel on July 6th. I wouldn't have had the opportunity if I was too busy and if it was all business for me. When I heard first that it was three weeks to the event, I said, no, we take at least three months, you know this, to mark an event such as speakers as Maxwell coming over to the Philippines. But I had to stop, pause, pull over, and listen. Forget the business, pursue the advocacy. Do we still have time for this? It's not what happens to us, Dr. John Maxwell, my mentor, reminds us. It's what happens in us that's most important. I know, for example, that the quality of my whole time tonight will not be dependent on how successful my plans will unfold for my family. I think 90% of the quality of my whole time tonight is how I react to situations I did not anticipate in the family. It's not what I plan, it's how I choose to react to situations I did not anticipate. A couple of years ago, I stumbled upon the word responsibility. You've heard this before, I'm sure you have. Do you know the difference between responding and reacting? I was surprised to find out. They're not the same. Could you tell your seatmate what you think is the difference? Come on, I'll give you 10 seconds. What's the difference between responding and reacting, apart from spelling? Come on. Done? Anyone? Anyone? Let's do it with the help of Webster's, okay? To respond is to positively react. To appropriately react. We can never negatively respond. And it's redundant to say, wow, what a positive response. <laughs> Every human being, take note, has the ability to react positively no matter how challenging the circumstances. Animals react by instinct. Human beings have the ability, most of the time, to respond. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what issues with my boss, with my wife, with my customers, with my children, I can always choose to react positively. Therefore, I can always win. Raise your right hand, all of us, please. Just for a few minutes. Tap the shoulder to your right. Tap the shoulder to your right. And say, you are a human being. Start acting like one. <laughs> Raise your left hand. Okay, to those who can't speak Tagalog, just follow my cue. It, 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 it means much more in Tagalog. Okay, raise your left hand, tap the shoulder to your left, and say, Minsan, Ayubka. Do we have the capacity to step aside, pause, and think, and respond? I have a test for you. I wasn't thinking of doing this, but I have fun doing this test. If you've gone through this test, just go through it with me one more time. You have pens with you? You got paper with you? Okay, I guarantee you, 50% of you will come out realizing you don't really listen. Do you listen? Do you really listen? Okay, don't write this down. Listen, listen carefully. And remember as much, okay? And even if I tell you in advance, you still won't get it. Listen to the following words and remember as much. Don't write it down until I tell you, Rebecca, okay? <laughs> Turn off the record button, come on. <coughs> Listen, nurse, sick, patient, surgeon, therapist, dentist, operation, office, specialist, procedure, stethoscope, Long spelling wrong. <laughs> Medicine, ill, cure, healing. Go, write down as many. Come on, let's go, go, go. Look at your own paper, come on. 
Come on, come on, let's go, go, go. Remember, it's one. If you really listen, 12 to 15 words, just to discourage you. 10 more seconds, as much as you can. Come on, remember as much. If you listen as much. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Okay, pets down. Only two lists, the second list. Maybe you'll do better with the second list. Pets down. No writing. Listen up. Bed. Rest. Nap. Awake. Yawn. Dream. Subconscious. Snooze. Alarm. Blanket. Doze. Pillow. Slumber. Woozy. Peace. Go. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Work in groups of two, three, five. Fifteen more seconds. Come on. As much as you can. Remember as much as you can. Share notes if you must. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Done. Bends up. How many remember from the first list? Nurse, raise your hands. Oh, look at that, 80%. The first, remember the first. <laughs> How about healing? Look at that, practically all. Okay, recency, the principle of recency. Remember the first, we remember the first and the last. How about stethoscope? Oh, look at that, check spelling. <laughs> of course, we remember the most difficult ones. How about doctor? How many remembers doctor? Write it down. Oh, look at that, at least 50, 60%. Okay, second list. Bed. That is the first. Congratulations. See? Peace. Almost all. How about sleep? How many remember sleep? 50, 60 percent. Amazing. Okay, all those who remembered doctor and sleep, can you stand up please? I have a special prize for you. Stand up. All those who remember doctor and sleep, stand up. Doctor and sleep. Whether doctor and or, or sleep, stand up. Okay, look at this crowd. Remain standing. Okay? And or. Look at that. Now or. Even more standing up. Amazing. Okay. Can I just tell you this? The price is a revelation. <laughs> Diagnosis. I did not mention doctor nor sleep. <laughs> This is what I like. Now they insist. You did so. <laughs> I did not. She said so. You weren't listening. You invented it. You filled in the blanks. By association. We made our own conclusion. And then we condemn. <laughs> Why don't you give yourselves a round of applause? Isn't that an amazing exercise? I did not. Can you just quit? <laughs> they won't stop. <laughs> I was introduced as chief disturber, okay? So I'm not going to change you. I'm just here to disturb you. So think about that. Do we really listen? So just three points, as I said. Number one is address the present. Number two is be the change. Make the most of what you have. Officer struck, had strong arms. <laughs> and he also had another view to refocus his mind. He also had a two-year-old himself. That's why he knew twinkle, twinkle. <laughs> That's all he had. But it was more than enough. I've had a chance to train in over 70 countries in the last 25 years. In every institution, every country that I've worked in, I think you would agree. I didn't read this anyway. I wrote this down one day in my diary. The top complainers are always the least producers. In fact, I've personalized it. In any situation, the more I complain, the less I produce. Raise your left hand. 
Come on, tap the shoulder to your left and say, stop complaining. <laughs> Raise your right hand, tap the shoulder to your right and say, I only complain about you. <laughs> it, was in a, it, it was in a quality conference in Malaysia one day that I woke up to this reality that getting into trouble is not my choice. So I never tell my kids don't get into trouble. I used to be told that. But the reality is, even if I don't get into trouble, trouble gets to me. <laughs> I mean, if you think about the last 10 troubles in your life, perhaps three, it was your fault. Knowing you, it was your fault. <laughs> but the majority of the troubles we go through have come to us. And so, the bigger challenge is not getting out of it, but going through it well. To accept the fact that I'm going to get into trouble over and over again. And my goal is to go through it well. It is in a marriage conference that Maricel and I, my wife, learned that there's only one secret so we will not get into trouble in marriage. And that is not to get married. <laughs> in fact, it's biblical. <laughs> It is better for man not to marry, said Paul, because if he marries, he will have trouble in this life. <laughs> I mean, he's not encouraging, he's not, he's not discouraging us. What he's saying, if you're going to get married, you might as well anticipate it, because it's going to happen. I have a tip as well. If you're going to get into trouble with your partner, and you're going to get into an argument, don't win all the time. Because if you win all the time, you'll get stuck with a loser. <laughs> and no one wants to live with a loser. So I was on my first triathlon experience. I made it through the bike and the swim, but there was nothing left to run. So I was looking for the exit. And just as I was able to figure out the best way to exit without those cameras, you know, taking shots of me, you know, how this media can be paparazzi out there. I was just about to exit. I hear this voice, Dad, don't quit. <laughs> you know what hurt the most? You're still not the last. <laughs> When your kid tells you not to quit, you better not quit. Excuse me, I was not the last. <laughs> there was a 65-year-old that followed me. He's always, the, he's, al he's always the first in his category because he's the only one in his category. <laughs> but thank God I did not quit because five years after Ella, my daughter, my eldest daughter, was running her own triathlon. And she had gotten into trouble. She fell three times in the bike. And as she started to run, bleeding on her left leg, I went beside her and said, Ella, are you sure you want to do this? You know what she said? Dad, just like you, I'm not going to quit. And because she didn't quit, she won the gold. I just finished my race. My daughter won first place. It's not just what you do. It's what others will do after you, because today they're watching you. Address the need. Be the change. I walk into a room with 50 other change consultants. Our speaker was D. Hawk, CEO Emeritus of Visa International. Perhaps you've heard this, you've read about this. I was there when he said it first. If you're going to survive and thrive in the world of the future, you must be a K-Yord. One who has accepted the chaos of life, but has committed to provide order. Chaos is here to stay. Now you provide the order, not your boss, not your spouse, not your kids. Not Pinoy. Certainly not Binay. Oops. <laughs> that wasn't planned. No, seriously. It's got to be me. Perhaps you've heard of this admonition that I received from my brother Kiko many years ago. Many, many years ago. As I was contemplating quitting an international organization, I was running in Brussels. It was too tough. Too many cultures, too many countries, too many governments to deal with cultures, colors, languages. 
He said, don't you quit. You shine like a star because the world is getting darker. But you will notice the darker the night, the brighter the stars shine. P.S. When you shine, you don't shine for yourself. You shine so that those who are in darkness might see. I read that note, I set it aside, and I said, bring on the darkness. <laughs> it's a tough world. We must be the change and make the most of what we had. As I said, Nick Strzok had a two-year-old, two. It helps when you can empathize and you put yourself in somebody else's shoes. And finally, number three, choose the higher road. He chose the higher road. But Anthony, it's just a moment. Moments matter. When Maricel and I would go into counseling, and we still do occasionally when we've got issues counseling ourselves, I would remember those times we'd be arguing for an entire hour in front of our counselor. And then at one fleeting moment, I say something that actually exhibits some love. And she does something that actually shows some respect, because that's what men long for most, respect. And then George, our counselor, would capture that moment and say, that's it, Anthony. Multiply that. We mess up for an entire hour, and for a minute, we do something right. And it says, that's it, buddy Sal. That's the moment you must multiply. Moments multiplied define culture. And culture, Dick Clark, ex-CEO, Merck Pharmaceutical, culture eats strategy for lunch. We can have the best of strategies on marketing and sales here, but if our cultures will not support them, we will fail. On the other hand, the amazing encouragement is that we may, and we do occasionally come up with crazy, foolish strategies. If our culture is strong enough, it'll overcome that mistake over and over again. Again, a Maxwell statement. Values drive decisions that drive behavior that drive results. It all starts with values. And when I lose touch of my own values, I hope I'm in the company of people whose values will lift me up. That's it. A, address the present. B, be the change. And C, choose a higher road. ABC, can't get simpler than that. Old school is cool. Thank you very much. <laughs>